We should care about Warrior Care Month because it is a demonstration as an army, as a service, as the Department of Defense, that there is a commitment to our warriors, both those uh, active and to our veterans, those who have paid the sacrifice, whether through the battlefield or just through maybe a training event, maybe you suffered some kind of injury. We're still dedicated to taking care of you. And Warrior Care Month, through the various activities and programs, it's all about a reminder that we are still committed to you, the soldier. I've never imagined um, I would be able to do this. I knew I would be able to participate, but I never imagined that I would get this far. And not just be, just becoming a winner, but just actually getting out there doing it. And it feels good and it makes me want more. And that's amazing. It's so fun. That's another thing that, you know, you're having fun as well. When it comes to War Care Month, I, I believe that it should be important because it shouldn't just be about people actively or currently serving. We still have veterans out there that are dealing with things that necessarily they shouldn't have to deal with alone. So to me, that, that's why it is important because they serve the country just like myself and my fellow service members are doing now. But the programs are, weren't available then as they are now. So I think now they should start be implementing things toward more toward the people that are civilians out that war service members that are dealing with things that they shouldn't be dealing with alone. People should care about Warrior Care Month because he still is an individual who is productive member within society and we need more programs like this to support soldiers like him. If he is a soldier and stuff, he is a parent at the end of the day and he needs programs like this to rehabilitate, to integrate back into the workforce, regardless if it's civilian or military. Oh. Cut. Oh. Oh. Yeah, gang. Cut. Oh. Cut. Warrior Care Month matters because it's our opportunity, the Army that is, to get the word out about how committed we are to our soldiers, to our wounded, our ill, and our injured soldiers and their family members. It's important that we bring them into the Warrior Transition Battalions and be able to fo solely focus on them as a, as, as a soldier. It's not about a mission of going down range. It's not about a mission of, of training, of completing training. It's about get it, restoring these individuals to health so that they can return to duty or transition to the civilian lifestyle. I had an injury in 2013, Afghanistan. Um, we was hit with an um, IED and an RPG uh, simultaneously. Um, got banged up really bad. Um, we did win the fight, um, you know. So with that being said, um, it, it brought me here to this WTB to help better myself and find myself again, you know. I was uh, accustomed to leading soldiers. Coming here, I don't have to lead anyone. I lead myself and I put myself in a position of empowerment and they gave me that power and coming from off the line being in an aligned unit it was it was hard it was hard at first but i actually figured out how this place works and and it's it's one of the best places that i could ever 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 have been i hope she can realize that really no matter how big a problem is you can always get help from somebody to get over it. I didn't really know what expectations to have. I'd never really seen the Warrior Games before. But when I got here, I was blown away. This, the camaraderie of everybody uh, just having fun, and it was amazing. So we keep each other in check. Um, he helps me with my upper body injuries, so he might reach up higher to grab something. And for me, I might be doing the run around, chasing after my daughter and everything. It was actually my husband that gave me the motivation to keep going. He fell 16 feet onto his head and his hip, and 
he had a massive hard time going through it. And when I saw him do his PT test on a broken leg, that's really what gave me the motivation to keep going. And then coming here to this unit, it's been a tremendous improvement for me. I went through a rough patch right before I came here, and the support that I've seen from this unit, and it's not even just the support just for me, it's the support for my family as well. They help the entire family through this entire thing. I mean, we may, we may be injured, we may have our problems, but together we actually are stronger. <laughs> Warrior Care Month is, I mean, it helps open the eyes of those who are wounded already, and it helps them realize that they're not alone, that other people do care about them. And not only that, but it opens up the eyes of the public and other parts of the military that may not realize that there is another battle going on. And it's not necessarily a battle for yourself. It can be a battle for your injuries. It can be a battle for your mental well-being. And realizing that people are suffering through those problems, maybe they might be having problems too, but there are people out there that they can go to to realize they're not alone. There you go. Woo! Yeah. One, two, three. Shut up! If you're sitting out there, and, you know, maybe maybe you're experiencing PTSD, maybe you had a TBI, maybe maybe you got a diagnosis that just doesn't settle right with you. The point is, you're part of that program if you're critically or severely wounded, ill or injured. So go take advantage of those services that are out there and it's evolving every day. I really feel that DOD is stepping up the game and helping out to take care of wounded warriors. So utilize the services that are out there. You might think that, oh, I don't, I don't belong. I didn't feel like I belonged the first time I came out to these camps. And when I got connected with this, I was like, oh, I didn't get blown up in, blown up in Afghanistan. I didn't lose a limb. You know, I got diagnosed with cancer. Anybody chemotherapy, radiation, where are you at? Where's my cancer brothers and sisters now? Where are you at? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool, man. We're gonna go, we're gonna go throw up. Everybody eat a banana, we're gonna go over here and throw up. So it's cool. Bananas, the only thing it takes keep going down and you coming back up out of this, The truth is, we all belong because in some way we were critically wounded, ill, or injured, and being here was part of that healing process. So know that there are people out here that truly understand and there are advocates within these programs that are here to really help you. See, if you're in the middle of it, a lot of times you don't, you don't know that you have changed. And you have to be able to, to recognize and acknowledge within yourselves and become more self-aware. So that's what these coping skills are all about. Every time, the one thing that helps me every single time is the peer forms that every time we do a crit I do a critique for any of them, I always say about the peer form, I think they are great, they help many people in the groups. Every time I can see them, they, they, it's their release, they get it out of them. And once it's out there, people hear it and then they can relate to them and they can talk to them and it's just, it, it's just so beneficial. My primary takeaway is that I've gotten to be with other caregivers. So I don't feel quite as alone as I did before. And I also have had a chance to find out more about the programs and services available for my veteran uh, so that I can help him move forward into our new life. I would just want people to know that they're not alone. You many times can feel like you're alone, um, but this conference is helping me to prepare to deal with those feelings, to know who to call, when to call, where to call, and to get our veterans the help that they need. And the one
and it provides healing and it provides empowerment. There's so much. My art took a different form. Um, I'm a physical guy, so I got into blacksmithing. Art has provided me an opportunity to not only reconnect with my community, but reconnect with my family as well. From childhood, I had the abuse, and then adulthood, it kind of layered onto it. So art's always been in my life, um, and it's it's very helpful. And so to be validated by by a whole month of, of people that are trying to make a difference and, and helping out and and just encouraging me to like, wow, I do have some value. I am worthy. And for other people, like, I, I love it. It's amazing. I feel like the unspoken word, sometimes the thoughts that we have can take over your mind. So it's always good to express yourself, whether it's through painting or Whatever playing music, for me, the spoken word, I'm not gonna let those demons take over my mind. So what I do is I write down and I speak and uh, I, I do poems, spoken word. And to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't be here myself if it was not for the AFW2 program because a lot of times I've been through a lot of painful things like everyone else and I didn't care if I lived or died. I got involved in this program. I mean, and when I say it, I don't know where Marsha is, here she is. This program saved my life. It really did. I'm standing here today and I'm coming to the table for the next few days. Don't listen to news or politicians. They'll lead you astray. You better know that life He's living one more day. And when the bees of bloodshed rip apart your very skin, some will pray or cry for God, I may just lie and grin. No, no time to lay about, awaiting fiddler dreams beckoning sound. There's more evil in the darkness, and I still have another night. This is raw, it's from the heart. And again, this isn't, we're not here trying to be, you know, in sync. <laughs> We're here just to express. So I hope you can see it for what it is. We're not trying to be perfect. This is us expressing. This is the caregivers expressing from the bottom of their heart and soul a song that they wrote for you. Air Force Blue. Work 
Care Month is just, you know, 30 days where we take the time to really think about what we're doing as a community, what we're doing across DOD, and also what can I, the average citizen, do to kind of open up my doors and open up my mind and my heart to our servicemen and women. Each and every day, I count my blessings. A family portrait serves as a spiritual reminder. Finally, with adaptive sports, the healing process is cemented. And Marsha, when I said AFW2 saved my life, I meant it. Adaptive sports makes the um, soldier or veteran a, a better person, um, better member of society, and a better veteran or better service member. Uh, so it's, it's vital. It helps you not feel sorry for yourself. It helps you adjust and adapt to a new norm of life, whether you're wounded, ill, or uh, injured. It's just an overall great thing. Over 60% of those that have served or have served or are going to serve in the military have a family member that has served. So we're the largest family-run business in the world. There's 313 million people in America and only 0.87% that are actually qualified for military service, so less than 1%, total of 25 million veterans. We're the less than 1%, so it's critical that the public pays attention to not only our soldiers, but our veterans coming back as well and helping out. Finding the sport and finding this program saved my life because it gave me a goal to go somewhere. Uh, which is why I care so much to be able to come back out to, to help. I don't care what we're asking, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, but to help you guys and, and realize that you know, just because you have whatever injury is, and it doesn't matter if you're a quadriplegic, it doesn't matter if you're an amputee, it doesn't matter if you just have PTSDs or your loss of sight, everybody has some kind of issue they have to now learn to adapt it and build over, whatever it is. We all do, every one of us. And I can say that because I'm I'm in the same boat. So that's my biggest thing for you guys is, is you know, coming out here, you get to forget about what's wrong. I'm gonna pull myself out just a little bit just to get me out of the dump. Yep. And then once I do that, yeah. I think Warrior Care Month is huge. There's so much that goes behind the scenes for spouses and stuff like that. Even while you're active duty, while you're while you're overseas, you know, that is what keeps warriors going. You know, they say in the, in the army, family first, and that's because if your family's not right, your soldier's not, or your warrior's not going to be the same outside. It's a huge factor on it. I mean, it's essentially everything. I mean, my family is everything to me. If my family fell apart, it would, I'd fall apart. So adaptive sports is my outlet. That's what, that's what relieves my stress. My wife is a huge part of that as well. My son, my family is a huge part of that as well. I hope my son just learns from my experience, my journey, that there is no reason to quit. Many times the easiest route for me could have been just to quit. I'm glad I've never taken that route. Sometimes they say the hard route is the best route. I've definitely felt that I've, you know, I've gotten more in return from taking the hard route. And I hope my son takes that. I think Warrior Care Month is great because it shows appreciation. Um, I think sometimes the caregivers go unnoticed. I don't think that a lot of them, you know, most of us, and dare I say, I'm not speaking just for myself, but you know, it's it's almost a selfless service. You know, when we're, when we're caregiving, at least for me, you know, I'm not thinking about, oh, it's something that, it's, it's so much work, it's a burden. It's just natural to you, you know, it's something that you're caregiving, you're, you're giving all your care, and I think that, that that's, you know, the, the root of it. I think a month like this helps those who, who are, are doing their, you know, their job. It shows them that they're appreciated for all they're doing. Happiness on three. One, two, three. Happiness! Have fun today. While I was active, I would uh, work in the morning and for lunch I would eat. I would uh, lift weights and I would swim every day for lunch. 
and then go back to work. So a pool is nothing, nothing new to me. Now when you come after injury, I don't want any part of a pool. So getting into it, I really didn't want to, but I, um, I knew I had to. I, I felt like, you know, I wanted to see what I can do. So it wasn't that bad, it was, it was okay. I, I was, 50 meters is a long way. And I found that out twice today. <laughs> When, when people talk about like Paralympics and Warrior Games, I thought that was like a dream, like in the clouds, like that's, that's not like, I would never get there. I would never get there because I was thinking, I just want to walk again. <laughs> I just want to run again, you know, all that. So being here and like just enjoying everyone's company and like just having a grand old time, like it, it, it's surreal. It, it still is surreal to me. So Warrior Care Month, I feel like it's important for people to recognize and appreciate because warriors come home with whatever types of injuries and I feel like they want to come transition back into the regular world and they want to have a purpose again. And I think it's important to appreciate that and recognize that and support it. There you go, there you go. Better than your first one. I can definitely tell a difference this month from last month. Because uh, I basically started last month. And uh, I mean, my wife's told me, you know, I've, I've seemed to act different. I seem to be a little more happier. Just, you know, like I said, it gets you motivated. And, you know, I, I learned things here that I want to work on and get better at. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that. I think it was really important for us to be out here to support him and just to be a constant reminder, you know, outside of the teammates and people that he sees every day, you know, just to be another reminder of to give it all you got, why not? So, um, and I hope that she sees his strong will and his determination and, you know, she obviously won't remember it, but maybe we'll get a video out of it or something, so, <laughs> for her to watch in the future. I would say give it a chance, because if you don't give it a chance, you'll never know. Um, everybody comes out here and somebody has something wrong. It doesn't matter if it's an amputee, it doesn't matter if it's just PTSD. We all have to learn how to adapt to our new lifestyle. And if you don't give it a shot, you'll never know if it, if it will work. And not every sport is for somebody. You may love swimming, and so throwing might not be your thing, or you may love uh, wheelchair basketball, and that's fine, but that's why there's so many sports and so many opportunities. And I would say just give it a chance because it will work. We're all the alphas. We're all, you know, we all have that fighting spirit and you can take it out on that shot put or the discus or trying to beat your time in a track. No matter how bad things are, you can always get better. Something can always be better. One, two, three. three.
Full the healing, no steps to in physical wounds. Which ones consume your mind, body, and soul? Tell me, grabbing a hold until we explode like the mind is not your fault. Then fear and pain take control, bluff our true identity. Next comes the penalty. If you don't put down the Hennessy, it's death. My life in the penitentiary. Simultaneous sounds, bodies hit the ground, stabilize the section. No need to hide like witness protection. Everyone in this battle test is sending invested in this microphone I express it. So let's fly, fight, and win as our road to recovery begins. Finally got a clue, dreams were pursued while bleeding that red, white, air force blue. Three. 